let's talk about binary math operators. So first of all, what is binary? Well, binary is base two. It's the base two numbering system where we normally have base 10 with the numbers or digits zero to nine, but in base two, you only have the digits zero and one. In base 10, after a number reaches nine, the last digit, you move over and make the next one a one and then put a zero there. So after nine, you get 10 or one zero. In binary, after you reach the highest one, which is one, you get a one zero. In base 10 decimal, each placeholder to the left is 10 times as big as the one to the right. For example, one zero zero in decimal is 10 times as big as one zero. Same thing in binary, except it's two times as big. So one zero zero is two times as big as one zero. Counting a binary is interesting because, well, you only have zeros and ones. So you start with zero and normally we start with zero when we're counting on computers anyway. And here are the numbers from zero to 15. You can see that in the number 15, it is made up of four ones, one, 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 which is really uh, each one has a different placeholder value. The one in the farthest right is a value of one. The second one is twice as big. The next one is twice as big. The last one or the one to the left is twice as big as the one beside it. So you have a one plus two plus four plus eight. So that makes 15. Just like if you had the number 9,999, it would actually be 9,000 plus 900 plus 90 plus nine. So same kind of thing, just adding them up. Sometimes we also like to think of one as being true and zero as being false. Just keep that in mind as you go through computers and do things. So what are the, the binary math operators? Well, there are the six basic ones I want to talk about. There is the not, the and, the or, the XOR, and then we have these shift left and shift right. Not is the first one we're talking about. Not basically swaps all the zeros and the ones. If you're doing an unsigned integer, integers are 32 bits, and you have the number one, it would be 31 zeros followed by a one. If you do the not of that, it would be then 31 ones followed by a zero. If you were to represent that in decimal, that would be about 4 billion. The AND is only one if both operands are one, otherwise it's zero. So we have an example right here where we have a, well, two four bit numbers. And so we'll look at each bit as a column. If we take the first column, the one to the left, you have a one and a zero. So because it's not both ones, you can't get a one out of it. So it's a zero. But the second column, one and one is one because both of them are ones. Zero and one is zero. And then the fourth and final column to the right, zero and zero is zero. The OR operator is one if either operand is one. Doesn't matter if they're both one, if either or both are one, then it is one. So in this example, the first column is a one and a zero, which is a one. The second column is a one and a one, which is a one. The third column is a zero and a one, which is a one. And the fourth column, there are no ones. So it's a zero and a zero, which is, well, zero. So zero or zero is a zero. The exclusive or is kind of like the English language or. Usually it's something or something else, but not both. So consider this following right here. Um, you have a one or a zero, which is a one. Then you have a one or a one, which is not only one of them. So it's a zero. And you have a zero and a one, which is a one. And then a zero and zero, which when you apply the XOR operation is still zero. Shifting to the left moves the binary number to the left 
a certain number of digits and fills the missing digits with zeros. So if you consider the following, which is four shifted two spaces to the left. So you're thinking about four as a, well, one zero zero, and you're shifting it to the left two spaces. You have to add two more zeros, right? So it becomes a one fall by four zeros as opposed to one followed by two zeros, which becomes 16. Shifting to the right moves the number to the right and fills in missing digits on the, well, far left as zeros. So if a four is shifted two spaces to the right and a four is a one zero zero, it's shifted to the right, which takes away those two zeros on the right. And now it's just a one. So let's go ahead and look at some code to see how we can implement this. So I have some code right here and this is just a basic shifting. You can see that uh, two shifted one space to the right is a one. But let's get back to the uh, simpler ones. So I have a value right here and let's go ahead and add a couple more variables. So I got a and B and C. And these are all unsigned shorts. So let's start with the first one, which would be, well, let's do the uh, not operator. So if I have a large, well, it's unsigned shorts with 16 bits. So if I have a large number uh, such as um, uh, 5,000 and I apply the not operator to it with the tilde, then it would become a large number. So I'll go ahead and run this. And you can see that it's now, well, you know, 60,000, which is great. That's a nice big number. I can also write this number instead of as binary. I can, uh, not binary, instead of as decimal, I can write it as a binary number. So if I say, well, let's take this number and write 0B. And then I can have 16 zeros because it's uh, unsigned short. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. That would be a large binary number. So I'll just take this number and make it a value of 4. Okay. So that's number 4. And I should run this. I should want a 4. I want a 1 here because it's binary. So it's a 4. So I'm going to run this and... When I run it, it produces the number four, right? Because this is zero, a one, two, four. If I wanted to do the, well, um, take all these and do the not operator. So let's take all these and switch them to ones. So one, 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 two, three, four. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So now it's all ones. So if I print this number out as it is, run it, you can see that it is now 65,000 something, right? If I want to do the not operator, I could take this one right here, turn it into a, a zero, which really is still a big number, but I'm going to do the not operator in front of this, which means that now we're going to have this is a one and the rest of them are zeros, which makes it a four. So I'll go ahead and run that. And that gives me a four. Okay. So we have this, we got to figure it out. We know how we're doing this. So now let's assign some things and do some ands and ors and nots and stuff like that. So if I take uh, the number, let's copy this right here. And we'll do a. B and C. And I can just make all these zeros for now. It's kind of easier when you can see what they are. All right. And so all these are zeros. And let's say I want to do the, um, make these ones and then these ones right here are ones. So this number has a value of six and this one right here has a value of three. And let's uh, take this one right here and put some let's 
just do this. So we have this value of 15. All right. <clears throat> if I wanted to do the uh, or operator on A and B, it should be a 1, 1, and a 1, which would give me 1 plus 2 plus 4. 1 plus 2 plus 4 is 7. So if I do the OR operator of A and B, I should get 7. So I'm going to do A OR B and print that out and run that. If I run this, I get 7. That's exactly what I expected, which is a 1, 1, 1. All right. If I change this and I do an AND operator, well, this one is a 0, this one's a 1, and this one's a 0. So it should give me a value of 2. So run that. Now, if I were to take these exact same numbers and change it to an XOR, then it's going to be a 1 and a 0, which makes it a 1. A 1 and a 1, which makes it a 0. And a 0 and a 1, which makes it a 1. So it should be 1, 0, 1 which is a four plus a one, which is five. So I'll go ahead and run this. And it gives me five. So you can see how the and, or, and x or work. And if I were to take, we also saw how the not works. Now let's go ahead and shift this. Um, C, let's shift it around a bit. So you can see that C is currently 15. So what happens if I shift it to the left? A digit. Well, you gotta remember every time we shift something, so C shifted to the left, one digit is going to be two times as big. So instead of being 15, it should be 30. So go ahead and run this. And we can see it's 30. If we were shifted the other direction, it would only be just these three right here. So We'll shift it the other direction, and those three will make seven because 15 shifted that way. You lose that one, and it becomes a seven. So run it, and it becomes a seven. So you can see how shifting works. You can see how all these things work. Now let me show you some basic cryptography stuff. So if I were to take a number, say six, and I wanted to encrypt it, I could use a series of ones and zeros to encrypt it and to make something secret. All right, so we don't know what this number is. It's just some king, something I'm going to call it my key. All right, and now instead of displaying this one time, I'm going to display it twice. So the first time I'm going to take my my message number A. And I'm going to encrypt it with my key C. So I do XOR C and it will give me a value. Then I'm going to print out the value. And then I'm going to take that same value. And I'm going to make the value XOR with the key again to give me the decrypted message. So this one right here will be a nice big number it's going to print out. Something randomish looking. And then it's going to encrypt it again with the same key, which just changes it back into the value it was. So it should be back to six. So I'll go ahead and run this. So it prints some number and then it prints out something else. I could, I could take some nothing other than six. Say I want to just do, say my favorite number is a uh, five hundred and forty three. So 543, not doing binary. I'm going to encrypt it and then decrypt it. So I run this. So 543 gets encrypted in that number and then decrypted in this one right here. So you can see how the XOR operator can be used for encryption and decryption. Anyway, I hope this gives you a general idea of how these things work and how to use these operators to do basic mathematical well, more complex mathematical stuff.